Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and I want to share with you 10 gestures you may not be familiar with in iOS. Some of these gestures only work on 3D touch enabled models such as the 6S or newer, and many others work with all models. The first thing has to do with calendars. So if we go into a calendar, and you'll see we have an event. If we tap on this event, we can slide it up and down to whatever time we want. And you may not be familiar with that. Also with these little dots, scroll down and you can change the time quickly. So you can create it and modify it later. It's just easy enough to tap and hold and move it around. The next gesture has to do with a 3D touch gesture. And many people will be familiar with this, but if you just press and push down hard on the left, you can switch between applications. So if I go through here, I can push down hard and then go back to calendar and again do this. But there's a quicker way to go back and forth. If you push down a little bit and slide, well, let me try it again, push down a little bit, slide all the way across, it brings you to the most previous app that you were in. So if you do it again, you're back. Do it again, you're back to calendar. So it's pretty quick and easy. Another gesture you may not be familiar with is in the browser itself. So if you scroll down, say you're using the browser and you've lost the address bar, a lot of times you can just pull down, but it, you can also tap up here and it will show up or tap at the bottom and you'll get the bottom bar as well. When you're on the bottom bar, if you tap and hold the tab view here, you can close the most recent tabs that are open or all of the tabs that are open. It's a quick way to do that. If we go into the tab view and tap and hold the plus button, you'll see recently closed tabs. So maybe you closed one, you didn't mean to, you can just get them back really quickly by doing that. So those are quite a few gestures we've gone over already, but there's some others that I wanted to show you as well. Some of the other gestures have to do with photos. So if you go into photos, you'll see these are panoramas. And if you go into any photo, you can kind of just swipe down it'll go away. That could be on the web or anything else. Go into another one. This is Niagara Falls. Swipe down, it goes away. Swipe down, it goes away. So that's really nice. There's another gesture within photos though that helps you out. And one of those is in case you have thousands of photos like I do, if you want to quickly scroll to the top or bottom, put your finger between the very bottom and the chin here on the iPhone or the bezel and tap like this. Sometimes I double tap, it works quicker, and it brings you to the bottom. Do the same on the top, it brings you to the top. There we go. And that's a pretty simple gesture. Now, if you're in a browser and you want to save a photo that's in here, you can just 3D touch on that photo. Now, let's go back. If you push too hard, it opens up a preview. But you 3D touch, let's go back. 3D touch and slide up and you can copy that, share it or whatever you want to do. Many times you can save a photo as well. And if a photo is up on your screen, again, just swipe down and it goes away. Now within photos, there's another gesture that I forgot to show you in here. If you hit select, you can quickly select everything at once. So you just slide your finger across what you want to get rid of and it highlights it really quickly. So you could have thousands, you just scroll down through and it will start selecting them and deleting them. It's a pretty quick and easy way to get rid of things. Within mail, there's a nice gesture as well. So if we'll go into mail and we tap and hold on compose and I would love an aerial atom, but I don't have one right now. If we tap and hold compose, we can see our recent drafts. So maybe you were drafting an email, you forgot what you did with it, or you needed to get it back quickly, tap and hold compose and it comes back up. That's pretty nice as well. I have one more gesture to show you and that has to do with your calculator app. So if you go to a calculator and we just type some numbers here, if we swipe left or right, we can clear those quickly instead of swiping and getting rid of all of them or just hitting C there or AC instead of getting rid of all of them, just swipe and get rid of one number and you don't have to start over. It's a quick little simple gesture. Now that's, 10 or 11 gestures within iOS for your iPhone, but there's more gestures on the iPad. So let me share those with you real quick before we wrap things up here. The iPad has gestures that don't work on the iPhone and they're pretty handy, at least for me, sometimes they are. So if you swipe up with four fingers, you've got the app switcher. Tap what you want, swipe up, and then you're back. We'll go into notes. If we swipe four fingers to the left or right, we get the last app we were in. So it's really quick just to swipe back and forth that way. We also have a split keyboard within notes or within 
any app that uses the keyboard. So if you tap and hold this keyboard icon, you can hit split and it splits and then you can move it around too. So that allows you to type like this. You can say, hi, how are you? It's a little tricky, but you can get it if you play around with it. If you don't like it, bring it back together, slide it down. It's a pretty nice little gesture that I've used from time to time. The final gesture I wanted to show you on the iPad has to do with Safari. Safari has tabs, as you know, you can open multiple tabs, but you can move them around. So if you want to make one further left, you can do that, drag it back and forth. You can just move it back and forth, tap and hold, and you're able to do that. So those are some gestures you may or may not have known. Hopefully they help you out. Some of them I was aware of before. Some of them I wasn't when I was researching this. But if there's others that you use regularly, let us know in the comments below. I obviously didn't cover everything that iOS has to offer, but let us know what you found if it's something that's useful. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. And also if you want the wallpaper, I'll leave a link to it in the description below as well. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.